Hello everyone, welcome back again. My name is Jesse and in today's tutorial, learn about arrays in Julia. So what is an array? So an array is an ordered collection of elements. So it's a form of mutable list, right? It's not like a tuple. Tuples are immutable, but arrays are mutable collections. So in Julia, arrays can be used to represent one dimensional, which is the vector, or it can be used for matrices, which is two-dimensional or three-dimensional and multi-dimensional arrays, making it more powerful for several numerical computing aspect. Now let's see how to create an array in Julia. So the basic sentence of creating an array that all, all arrays must be inside a square bracket, right? So this is one way of creating an array at the first method of creating an array. So you can be more explicit and define the type of it by going with list format. So I can be more explicit and define a type like this. So this is going to be an array of only integers. So it's automatically going to accept only integers or convert them to integers. Then it can also be more explicit and give it like Fruit 64, because 64, and convert everything to a fruit. So let me show you an example. So let's create an array. Then I can also create simple array. So if I go straight away with this, right, this is going to be an empty array, right? So this is going to be an empty array with nothing there. So let's comment this one out. An empty array. Perfect, right? So and the type is in it. So because the type is in it, it can accept any type of value. So it can be and it can accept tens. So let's say let's call it as array two. Because it's the type is in it, it can, it can accept any tens. It can accept strings. It can accept uh, numbers. It can accept floating values. So 0 0.5. All of these things because the type is in it. And it's going to work perfectly without any error. right so the type is in so that is one way of creating an array so if you don't know the type you can just go straight away but in case you want to be more explicit then you define the type so the moment i make it like array of integer right this is not the best way of writing it in julia but if i do something like this 64 now if i whatever i'm going to put here it's going to all it's, it's going to only accept and convert them to all integers so this is more explicit you can also do the same thing like array right and I go with fruit if I go with this particular format now it's only everything that I place there two and then let's give it as four and then if I put this value here right 1.5 and then five it's going to convert even this one although this is like a raw integer it's going to convert it to a fruit that is the concept about it so when you define the type it become more strict and become more confined to the soon to convert everything to a fruit so that's how to create an array in julia which is very very interesting okay now let's see some other stuff can also with another way of creating an array you can also create an array with this particular format with the array function right which goes with this then you supply your values here or you can be more specific and more explicit they define the type which is integer or fruit so this is going to be the type so whether it's integer or whatever thing that you want it to be and then you're going to define your dimension so this is the second method of creating an array in julia now let's see some examples of an array and see what you can do with an array so i'm going to create a simple array called or number right so numbers and then there's another way of creating an array in julia which you can do with collect an array of odd numbers right so this is going to be something like this so one three five seven and then nine so this is going to be an array of odd numbers so i how do i work with this particular tree as several things i can do to get information so let's call it getting info info about this array in case I want to get info about this array, I can just go with element type, right? And then I go with odd numbers. In the name of the array, it's going to give me a particular stuff, which is going to be integers, right? So that is another way of getting info about this particular array of integers that you have created. In case I want to get the dimensions, I can just go with endems and then the odd number for the name of the array, and it's going to give me that it's a one-dimensional array, which is a vector. Can also get a size 
a size is also going to go supply me the number of rows and a type the number of rows which is five five so five elements which is quite interesting and also do the same thing for the length which in this case is going to give us as or to give us five right as the element so these are some of the ways you can get a lot of information from a particular array so you can also use the type to type of to check for it is going to give us the type right which is going to be more explicit and tell us that it is a vector because we learned previously that one dimensional array julia has seen as vectors right so that is why it is given us here as a vector very nice okay. perfect so that is one of the ways of getting information now let's see how to index our array how do we assess it how do you index indexing to assess right we are using indexing to assess our array so first of all to be able to assess this particular array remember that julia's array starts from one not from zero that is very interesting most languages start from zero but in julia starts from one so since it starts from one if i want to index this particular array so odd number i want to get a first value i just go with one not with zero if i go with zero it's going to give us an error right bounce error bounce error right because julia starts from one not from zero so i go with one then it's going to print it perfectly for me at first value because i want the the last value i just go with end then go to print the end value which is nine so in case i want the first value to the third value and also do the same thing then it's going to print one to the third value which is five right so one three five that is how to work with it in a very nice format so that is something about the indexing about Julia. Again, in case I want to sort this particular value, I can also use the same thing of so that is something about the indexing in Julia. Perfect. And now let's see some other stuff you can also work with. So there are more some more advanced stuff later. So let's see how to work with creating arrays from the range, right? So we're creating an arrays. From range. So there's a whole tutorial on range in Julia, creating arrays from range. And let's see how to create arrays from range, right? So there's a whole tutorial on working with range. So the simplest way of creating an array of working with range is just go with the range function. Mind you, the range function in Julia 1.0 is, is upgraded from the one in the previous version. So in the previous version, I could have done something like this. Then 10, then it's going to, it's going to work. But this case is going to give us a method error. It's going to work in 0.6. And then the rest, right? So if I check it here, it's going to work perfectly without giving us any error, right? But for it to work here, the best way is that you have to go with the stop. Right? So one it starts with start stop and step so there's a whole tutorial on it in the links below you can check in the description below the playlist you can check for it so that is how to do it so that is the longest way the simplest way is just go with one is to ten just like it's given us here and also going to create an array for us in a range for us perfect so how do we create an array for this particular array? so the first method is just go with collect so collect is a very powerful function that allows us to create an array from a range so if i just go with one is to ten which is the previous one that we had here right it can also put an array for us in a nice way or i can just go with this format so collect and then instead of putting the one is to ten i can put this particular stuff here that i have my range here into this format and then it's also going to create an, an array for us so any of them is going to work so this is how to create arrays in julia from range right using the range format then use college to build an array from a range okay, perfect so now let's because of that let's give a simple example of odd number so let's call it odd two so i'm just going to create an odd number then this i'm going to use the collect to create it right so collect is a simple method of creating it then the, the, the collect goes with a start a step and then a stop right that is the basic synthesis of it so now let's see how what I mean by that. It's going to go with this. So one, I'm starting from one, then I'm stepping by two because I want to create an odd number, then to twenty. Right. So if I go with this particular format, it's going to create 
Prophet Old number 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, which is perfectly an odd number. Okay. Now let's quit one for even number. Even number. Then it's going to be collect. Then one. Even numbers are going to be totally different. So one, two, and then maybe 20, right? So even numbers, let's start from two. Even numbers are going to start from one. But go with this, we're also going to create the even numbers two, four, five, six, seven. Perfect. So now we have to set, right? So these are two arrays. So to combine these two together, I can just see the union. Then I'm going to add this like odd number and then the even number. So this is going to work and create a union for us of all the numbers together. So one, two, the end, right? Which is very interesting. So that is a union that you have created. Another way you can also do, I can also do an intersection. So intersect of our odd number. I don't think it's going to intersect. And then let's quit of our odd this numbers, right? Because there's no way even numbers and odd numbers. So we are using this particular odd number so that you see the intersect of this particular sum we had. Then we're going to print it for us. So these are the values that are intersection. So you can also do this in in with arrays. You can also do set diff. Set set diff, right? So that's going to give us a difference between this and this. So let's say a difference between odd numbers and then our odd numbers here which is also going to be almost the same thing so these are these are the different so realize that this intercept is going to tell us the intercept between the two values that we had and then the set difference is going to say the difference that are not found in one that are not found in the other right so this is more the stuff you can also do with it and let's check some cool stuff you can do apart from this simple stuff in case i also want to add a number Define array, right? Remember that arrays are mutable, right? So in case I want to change something, I want to add a number to it. In case I want to add to it, there are several ways I can do that. So I have we had this as our value here, which is up to 10, right? And then I want to add a value to it. I want to add something to it. So I can do it in this way with so push, then bank, right? Exclamation mark. Then the number that I want to push there. This is where I'm pushing, right? Is the area I'm pushing, and I want to push there too. So if I push there too, now it is no more 10, it's now 11. So you see that 2 has been added to the last element. So push is going to add it to the last element. There's also push first in case you don't want to push it to the last element here, but you want to push it to the first element. You can also do push first and then bank, right? Then you supply the Area that you want to push inside, then I want to push the four there. So if I do it like that, it's now going to add four to the beginning. So it's going to push it the first. Okay, that is about pushing. Let's check about popping, right? Deleting. So we can do pop. This is going to be for deleting. So deleting is all popping. Delete and then pop, right? So to pop, it's going to be pop is going to remove the last value so here we had the last value as 2 we had the last value as 2 here so in case I want to move that 2 out I can also do the same thing with the pop then I'll just go with my odd number it's going to remove the last value which is 2 so now 2 is no more there so if I check back again to my odd number that I had now it's only having 11 instead of 12 and then that's modified it anytime you see a bank here it is a mutating function, right? So it's going to actually change stuff inside. Okay, I can also do pop first bank and then odd number. So it's going to move the first value there. Oops, I made a mistake. Right? It's going to move the first value, which was four, right? Remember that we place four as you push four as the first one. Now we are popping it out here. Okay, perfect. So if you go back to our original number, we don't have it's just like the previous one I had, which is 10. Okay, so this is one of the stuff you can also do with it. You can also append. So appending is also just like adding so and I can do append, then bank, then I'm going to append all to even. 
right so i'm adding them together it's going to go to 20 values there so 1 2 3 4 5 6 so see that this is how it is that's appended appended is adding it to the other one so that's appended it to it you can also use push but push is going to add it to the last end and append is going to also be put in a different format okay so in case i want to sort these things out because this is not sorted out how do i do that there's also another function called sort and then the sort we have two this is a non mutating sort function so if i go with this particular append that we had here so let's put this one in final value. Let's call it as final array. Right? Let's call this one as final array. Now, if I want to sort this particular final array here, this is a non mutating function. So it's going to sort it, and then the result is going to be given to us as sorted. So 1, 2, 2, 3, 4, 4, 5. So this is perfectly sorted. Well, nice. But if I go back to the final array, it's, it's still the same. It did not change. It's going to be just like the previous one that we had. Just like this one that we had. So if you check it from here, you realize that they are, they are the same stuff, right? So the, this is a non mutating sort, right? Because there's no band. But to make it a mutating function, then you have to bring the band to so sort. So not, not all the functions in Julia are like that, but. Julia gives you the option of doing that to so final. Now this is going to be a mutating one. So it has changed it perfectly. So that's sorted it well. So if I go back to the final, now it's sorted. So if you check it from here and here, you know that they are the same. That's been sorted. That's been sorted well. So one 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 is done. Okay. So that is some of the things you can also do with modifying and manipulating arrays in Julia. Now let's see some other aspects also in Julia. You can also you can also do a streamer, right? So a streamer is like you're going to check for the last value, the maximum and then the so let's check for the streamer of this our value. Streamer is going to print the minimum and the maximum value. That is very interesting. So the minimum is one and the maximum is twenty. So in case I want to check for the maximum, I can only do the maximum of this my final array that I had I built. I'm going to tell me that it's twenty. I'm going to do minimum. Let's go tell us as one, right? So the streamer is a combination of maximum and 